Dane Goodman and Trey Wirtz. Wirtz is uh, coming off an impressive game as well. And, you know, it's going to be interesting to see. Radford gave Notre Dame all they wanted on that first night. And uh, Mike Ray, six players in that game, a really tight rotation. I know he'd like to expand that a little bit in this game. He's dealing with some injuries. But uh, Youngstown State, they'll go deep. They'll, uh, they'll play 10-11 guys, Bob. Lamar Simpson with the opening tip. Joined by Ted Valentine and Lee Cassell to officiate today here at Notre Dame. The Penguins in red. Notre Dame and the home whites. To the top in green. Air ball three, but a Johnny on the spot. Adrian Nelson, right place, right time, sticks it in. You know, so many times an air ball benefits the offensive player. You know, defensive guys are a little reluctant to go up and grab it. And uh, it was, so we're going to give him an assist on that shot. <laughs> Notre Dame, they'll play five out. Leshevsky, the tallest guy on the floor, but he likes to go out and then work his way in. Going to mismatch here. And Notre Dame exploits it. Nice job of finding that. Sometimes the team doesn't see it right away and, and has trouble delivering it, but Notre Dame got him the ball quickly. Cohill wears number five. Covington, number 32. Raton Mays, whose brother played in the ACC at Florida State. Here's Nelson putting up the three. Penguins get the offensive rebound. And all alone underneath on a great cut is Nelson. Well, just the offensive rebound not being able to clean that up. And a good spacing that time by Youngstown State allowed that back door. And we've got an offensive foul coming against Notre Dame and J.J. Starling. Mike Bray, veteran head coach of the Fighting Irish, now in his 23rd season, the all-time winningest coach here. Starling, may be, he may be about play. five years younger than everybody else out on the floor <laughs> for Notre Dame. Off the front of the rim for Cohill. Irish look to run, Starling a bump and a bucket. So good in the open floor. Really has some great size at 6-4. That ties the game. You see Starling's numbers against Radford. He did hit a couple of threes in that contest. Quick move by Green. Offensive foul. And Nate Leshevsky doing a little bit of everything. Yeah, Scored. nice job jumping, anticipating that right-hand drive that time. It was an easy call to make. And see, yeah, see, you push off with that left arm, you duck the shoulder, it's going to be an easy call every time. So now uh, we talked about Youngstown State scoring. This by far is the best team they've played yes. up to this point. And uh, Notre Dame will throw a lot of different looks at them defensively. Nate turns and misses. The rebound belongs to Nelson. One way to attack is get down the floor and a nice drive to the hole by Covington. First really open opportunity they've had in the open court. Now that's the way they want to play. They want to get up and down and the more Notre Dame misses, they're going to be able to get out to the open floor. Raton Bays with the basket. And it's 6-4 Youngstown. Three minutes in. Wirtz connects a three-pointer. Boy, talking to Mike Bray before the game, he's a guy whose game has really improved over last year. He, they're, they're looking for him to make a big jump in scoring and in every category. Back to the basket, Green. Leszewski the rebound. On the drive, Wurtz lays it home. Great space and everybody along the back line had their backs turned to the ball that time, so there was no help, no charge taken. 9-6 in favor of the Irish. How about Wirtz giving you a couple looks uh, with the drive and then also the, the three-point shot. Three out of the corner is good by Garrett Covington. Three for seven from distance. 
in the first two games. A tie ball game as Starling gets into the paint. And no real shot blocker out there per se for either team, so if you can get to the rim, you don't have to look around. Travel brings us to a timeout. Tied at nine. 15 33. Poor, save, repeat. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. <laughs> Our keys to the game brought to you by your local Ford dealers, Mr. Jaminski. Let me, you and me. Um, <laughs> Youngstown State pushed the tempo. We talked about 90 points a game. They want to get out and run in the open floor. And for Notre Dame, different looks defensively. Zone, man, try to confuse the Penguins as much as they can. That's going to be their MO throughout the course of the year. Does their transition game affect that? Um, well, the thing that affects it most is Notre Dame's offense because uh, if, if you know they're shooting a low percentage, Youngstown State is going to be able to get out and run, but uh, for Notre Dame, yeah, changing the offense, changing the defense, they, they can do that in a half court. Seven for Wurtz early, and Notre Dame goes up 11 to 9. Follow is good. Adrian Nelson gets an and one out of it. He's got six early and headed to the line. And it's going to be on work. But you know what? And they're trying. They're doing the right thing. And you want to attack Leshevsky. Try to get him in some foul trouble. Make him guard. Now, he backed off and didn't get the foul that time. But that was a really nice take by Adrian Nelson. Four key transfers into the Penguins program. And Nelson is one of them. He comes from northern Kentucky. And he had a double-double against UT Martin on Wednesday night, 12 and 10. Wurtz gets a breather, sitting down with seven early points. And, and you know what? And one thing we didn't touch on with with the portal players that to you know, especially in this group, for everybody to maybe take a step back and say, how can we all fit in here? Mm -hmm. You know, they may have been the guy where they came from, but they may have to step that down a little bit in the interest of winning games. Leshevsky with a great catch in traffic, and he puts it in and fouled on the play. Well, the one thing that Youngstown State's been doing here is switching. And when they do that, Leshevsky has been diving into the lane, and he's been getting mismatches inside against smaller players. Great lob. I mean, you can just, you can throw over the top of the guys who are guarding him inside. At 6'10", 200, he's got a huge advantage in there. You're right. Free throw to come. And nothing but net for his fifth point. Nate went to the line 15 times in the Radford game, made 12. And keep in mind, he had 47 free throws all of last season. Well, and that's a function of his game expanding. He's been able to put the ball on the floor uh, with a lot more efficiency this year, causing big guys to guard him, which they don't like to do outside. And here's that changing D you're talking about, yep. Mike, going to the zone and a foul on a – no, out of bounds. Stepping in on the line in that corner was John Lovelace, Jr., just lost track of where they was, and that was a, just a very active Notre Dame zone that time. Nate takes a peek. Ryan gives it up. Here's the drive and the score. Nicely done by Dane Goodwin. The thing you like about that, he's coming off a tough shooting night. One of eight against Radford. Get some rhythm. Put the ball on the floor, get to the rim, and then build outside from that. He needed that basket early. McBride hits the three. Now keep in mind that the first two games against lesser competition than they're facing today, of course, but the ball still got to go in the hole, and they were at 42% on threes in their first two games. Yeah, 40. The drive and miss by Starling. Rebound Penguins. Yeah, 51% overall and off and running. Rebound Notre Dame. And Leshevsky coming up hobbling a little bit. Yeah, he may have rolled an ankle trying to 
run it out. He's just now coming into your picture. And a foul. Got a push. So I think he, he I think Lefeski, he, a little contact on that drive. Look, he got a knee maybe in his thigh or so. Works back in, Starling out. We'll keep a close eye on Nate. He's still flexing the leg. May have been the left ankle, and now Matt Zona is going to come in, and they're going to get Nate out of the game. Mike Bray not taking any chances with uh, with number 14 for sure. Zona didn't play in the first game. He screens for Ryan and Cormack drills a three. Well, and with Lashesky out, the scoring has to be spread a little around a lot more out on the perimeter. And they have Ryan a very uh, capable scorer from there. Another zone look. Lefty Rush putting it up and off. And ripping the ball away is Trey Wirtz. Ryan, air ball. We're looking at the Notre Dame bench, and I think it's the left knee that may have gotten banged for Lashesky. Yeah, I don't think it was, it, you know, obviously he got dinged, but I'm pretty sure it was a knee on knee contact when he was taking, the, when he got in the path of the, the driver. 19 15, Notre Dame. <laughs> he played every minute except one of the game against Radford, so. This is a massive break for Lashevsky. <laughs> Brandon Rush. Transferred in from Fairleigh Dickinson. Lovelace. This kid was not really recruited by many people. And uh, I tell you what, Jared Calhoun, their coach, very high on this young man. He thinks he could be the best in the conference this year. And on the overplay. Lovelace commits his first foul. That brings us to a timeout at the 11.57 mark in the first half. A two-point ball game in Notre Dame's favor. The iconic praying hands of the Notre Dame library. And how about the lake effect snow, Mr. Jeminski? I went to sleep last night. There was nothing. <laughs> I woke up and there were six inches on the ground. Just... <laughs> Extra added, uh, welcome to South Bend from Coach Bray to me. <laughs> and go out and uh, I haven't I haven't cleaned a car off and I can't remember how long. Yeah, but like riding a bicycle, <laughs> came right back to you. <laughs> I went back to my Connecticut and New Jersey and Philly roots. Yeah, nothing like uh, cleaning your car off at the Meadowlands. <laughs> After a net game. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> still having issues with Brooklyn. <laughs> Out of the timeout, Notre Dame 20 on the shot clock. Lashevsky back on the floor. Short clock. Good one. Second field goal for Dane. Yeah, it looks very under control. You want to drive him off the three-point line, but uh, nice drive and shoot. 21-17. Contact, no whistle, as Rush was denied. Lashevsky left open, and he bangs it home. Youngstown is going to take a timeout. A wide open look against the guy that is at the top of the scouting report. Yeah, and uh, two of five in his first game. We talked about him. When he first started here, he was a catch and shoot guy. Mm -hmm. Did that well. He's really expanded his game, but you've, you've got to have something. This was just trailing off of the break. Everybody got compressed on the baseline. You got to find number 14. At all costs. Yeah, that's that's right up there at the top of the list. 
An 8 to 2 Notre Dame run to push this lead up to 7 at 11.09 of this first half. Nate's dad, Jay, of course, played at Wisconsin in the mid 80s, and Sis Abby had a day game today for the Wisconsin women. They were winning big last I checked. So a very busy Sunday of basketball. Yeah, the, the, uh, thing. the Big Ten, a deep league this year as well. So a, a timeout for Youngstown State. No doubt some inspirational moments. Coach Calhoun, and they go right inside and get the lay-in for Nelson. You know, I, I really like watching teams respond after a timeout. You know, what do they do? How do they run what they've, you know, drawn up there? That was a terrific play. Just a, a, a high pick and roll and a lob to the basket. Well executed. Ben Allen Lubin is in for Notre Dame. And Youngstown coughs it up on the break. Good defense by Dunn on the front end of that, but they didn't, they, they were too close together on that two man break. Good one. Left that one short. And Ben Allen right there to stick it back in, had six. He was the only bench guy that got into that game. Mike talked about they played just six against Radford. Yeah, I think they'd like to see him, his role expand. Another freshman, him, he ate 16 minutes in that first game. And turning the corner, a foul as well on the basket by Cohill. I'll tell you what, Bob, Youngstown State has shown the ability to put the ball on the floor and get to the rim. A lot of traffic up front. Yeah, two a, great screens. Yeah, Goodwin kind of waving right there on the weak side. But uh, there, there, there have been some straight line drives. Coach Calhoun of Youngstown State is in his sixth season, and by the looks of things, this is his best team, and a follow by Dunn. Will's basket makes it, in essence, a four-point trip. Yeah, and Leshevsky mistimed it. The ball hung on the rim, an extra bounce. That pulls Youngstown State within three. And clock, shot clock never got started. And so, we'll take a moment here to get that straight. Youngstown State, that stick back by Will Dunn. Youngstown State now with nine second chance points to Notre Dame's two. Five offensive rebounds as a result. In, you know, they're, they're shooting... Uh, 40% from three, but uh, 56%, you know, you're shooting 56% from the floor and that many offensive rebounds, you're going to put some points up on the board. It's 26-23 right now. Mike Bray talking about the defensive effort, no doubt. Well, that's the, you know, that's the other thing, uh, you know, up front, and uh, you want Lubin to be one of those guys, but who's going to be doing the rebounding? Mm -hmm. and, and the thing is, in this game so far, there haven't been a lot of long rebounds. A lot of the stuff for Youngstown State's been in the paint area, so the ball's been around the rim. It's interesting, Mike, and you as one of the great big men, I'd love to get your thoughts on this because the art of rebounding has changed with the advent of the three-point shot. You get so many more long rebounds now. Which, which to one makes Baycott's season last year so amazing that he had all those double-doubles and the numbers that he put up. But so many, the perimeter has become much more important rebounding from a team standpoint. You know, long shots, long rebounds. Your wing guys have to hang in there for those long rebounds. And it... Oh, double hello, Nate. Dead first half points. I guess his leg is okay. <laughs> <laughs> On the drive. Cohill left it way short. Wurtz tees up Ryan. He'll drive it instead and throw it out front. 28-23, Irish. Wurtz at the top. Throws it away. Trying to hit Lubin in the corner. Garrett Covington back in the game for Youngstown State. 
Here's the look, and we you know, talked about it. How about finishing with the left hand, too? I mean, that makes a, gives him some more style points on that. The whole right side of the floor cleared out, but uh, he couldn't do that two or three years ago. I mean, that's a part of his game that's really grown. Over 1,100 career points at Notre Dame. And Mike Bray talked about it. He, he was his most important recruit having Nate Lashewski come back, especially with Atkinson, you know, not being back this year. Such a big part of what they did last year. Catch and shoot for Covington. Uh, bidding for his third three of the day. Garrett's dad, John, played football here at Notre Dame in the early 90s on some great Lou Holtz teams. And he's coming back from a torn Achilles. Yes, as well. how about that? That was a career ender a number of years ago, and now it's uh, oh, ho hum. On the drive, Starling banks it in. 20, 30 to 23, Notre Dame. Nice lane for him. He had Lashesky out on the wing if they needed to kick out. Raton Mays. Nelson. Boy, they don't have any problem letting it fly. No, uh, and, you know, I think everybody's got the green light, and at that time, Goodwin, no hands up on the shot. It was an easy look at the rim. And a reach, trying to pry it loose. Cohill with his first foul. A timeout, 7.50. The time remaining in our first half. J.J. Starling, the freshman, with the score, Irish by five. Our focus shifts to the Castle, Castle Coliseum on the campus of Virginia Tech in Blacksburg. And game inside the Commonwealth of Virginia as the, the tribe of William and Mary comes up from Williamsburg to take on the Hokies of Virginia Tech. Six o'clock tip, check your local listing. Here in South Bend, 7.50 left in our first half. And the kind of uh, pace that, Mike, you had anticipated is playing out exactly that way. But here's the thing. I mean, Notre Dame is shooting 72% from the floor. And it's only a five-point game. The difference being those five offensive rebounds and second-chance points for Youngstown State. And, you know, on top of that, they're shooting 52%. So they left their defense at the door so far. This one's going to be tipped into the backcourt and out of bounds to Youngstown State. The turnover for Notre Dame, it's fourth. Uh, Jared Calhoun and the Penguins have to feel great about how they played this first half. Nelson, tough shot. And that bothered by the length. Yeah, and, uh, but I, you know, again, I like the attitude. They're in attack mode. They're, they're getting in, trying to get some fouls, trying to score inside, not settling for jump shots. Mike, is that a product of veteran players that you come to a place like Notre Dame and you're not in awe of the surroundings? You're just ready to go play basketball. Yeah, I mean, these, these guys have, you know, a lot of them have played, you know, 90-plus games already in their career. They've been in some big venues. So I, I definitely think that it takes a little bit of the uh, shock and awe out of you know, playing in a place like this. And plus, Sunday afternoon, early on, it's not a it's not a sellout crowd here, so it's you know it's not a full roar atmosphere that you'd normally get. Right. Adrian Nelson with the stick back, another offensive rebound for Youngstown State. Works. Thirty-two twenty-seven. Cohill. Pass deflected. Knocked out of bounds. With the Youngstown ball with 18 on the shot clock as Lubin comes back in for the Irish. Penguins getting it done on the offensive glass. And this is, uh, you know, they've established themselves there. And then uh, Notre Dame, again, you see there a lot of ball watching. you got to tag your man first and then go after the miss. Yeah. 
Nelson. He is on fire. 16 first half points. That, a, a long two. He's only made one three. He's doing it the old fashioned way as well. 32 30. Dane Goodwin. Here's Ryan. The Stanford transfer gives it up. Leshevsky drives and lays it in. And again, scoring with the left hand. Goodwin, Words, and Leshevsky combined 11 of 14 from the floor. Irish by four. Back in that zone, look, it's just the thing is you want to see if Notre Dame can rebound a little bit better out of that. Nelson left that one short as we approach the five-minute mark. The thing, too, Bob, not a lot of runouts for Youngstown State to, to get these points. They're doing a lot of it in the half court. Starling off the dribble. And we've got a lot of contact inside. This will be a hold on Cohill. Second on the Youngstown State forward. 34-30. There's a look of it you see right there. Good <laughs> trying to go in for the and hold. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I'll tell you what, to this point, nobody in the in the bonus so far. Both teams pretty, you know, doing a nice job defending without fouling. 16 so, fouls on Youngstown, only three on Notre Dame. Mashevsky tips it and a good save by Starling. JJ, a couple of crossovers, twists and misses, and a foul. Moving underneath, I believe they called it on Covington. Starling showing an ability to go both ways, left and right, able to use going to that left hand and then bringing his body back in, drawing the contact there. And I think, you know, right now, if I'm defending Sarling, I'm giving him some room. I want him to beat me over the top. He's too good when he gets into the lane. His fifth point, Trey Wurtz returns. Also, Matt Zona coming in. 4.23 left in the first half. And a second shot for J.J. Starling. Still a pretty tight rotation. I mean, Zona into this game because Leshevsky got in and hurt in that first half early on, so he's getting a little bit more rest. Only seven guys for the Irish so far. Mike Bray returns to his seat on the bench, 36-30. Six points for Starling. Bryce McBride wearing a different uniform number today, three rather than four, and the lay-in is going to drop from Malik Green. 36-32. Good find off the dribble. After a quick start, they've calmed Wurtz down a little bit in this game. Good one. Smothered and blocked. And this one will go out of bounds and belong to the Penguins. And Nelson doing everything out on the floor, both ends of it. Well, he has been outstanding. 16 first half points. And then from the help side with the rejection. Timeout. This is what I call protecting the paint. Well, Goodwin thought he had a wide open layup right there. He had the inside tracked and great help side defense that time. Nelson had one block in the first two games, but this is a really, really good help. And then you retain possession of the ball, too. Penguins down four. You're looking at Dwayne Cohill. He was shaken up on that last play. And they're going over to check on him out of the game for a moment. We're down to 342 here in the first half. And Cohill with the two personal fouls as well, too. So maybe Jared Calhoun saving him a little bit.
Nelson has been the man. Going up against Lashevsky. Just rolled it off the front of the rim. Now, I tell you, this it really, to this point, hasn't been an up-and-down game, but both teams have been very good in their half-court offense. Good one. Right in front. Eight points for Dane. Just really does a nice job. He'll attack the rim when it's there for him, but he's got the good mid-range game as well. McBride driving. That was tipped. That belongs to Notre Dame. Youngstown State shooting 48%. The Irish at 64%. Starling. And the bump. Foul on Brandon Rush. You know, it was funny talking to the, uh, the, the coaches from Youngstown State and Jared Calhoun and there were guys, there were people who have moved, come into this program who have never been 2-0 and before. Wow. And that was, a, you know, they were like, I can't, we're 2-0, and you know? And that gives you a little perspective. Well, he's put together a program that's had a winning season three straight years for the first time since the mid-'80s. Yeah, Youngstown State has not been a powerhouse for sure. And preseason number five in the horizon. Front end missed. It remains a six-point spread. Youngstown State has won 53 games over the last three years. And the pass bounces out of bounds. Lovelace yeah, with the error. The freshman, he just didn't have a good angle to feed the post that time. It's sort of a lost art in basketball. Well, because there's not a lot of posts to feed these right. days. Yeah. <laughs> but you're right. It's, you know, that was... I like that. Uh, I like that. You like being on the receiving end. Yeah, game. absolutely. I like that skill in other players. <laughs> J.J. Starling. And that makes it a nine-point game now. 41-32. Lovelace. Good hands by Lashesky. And it's going to be an and one from Malik Green. I was about to say, Bob, this is a little bit of a, uh, a red zone for, uh, for Youngstown State. There's the curl. Boy, he starts knocking down this shot. He is going to be really, really tough to defend. But then the other end, you got Green with that aggressive right hand, gets to the free throw line, and you know, for the Penguins, they didn't want this game to get out of shape going into half into uh, halftime. So that was a nice answer to the previous basket. Green, 23 years old, his, he's a sixth-year senior. He's working on his second Masters. Well, and the thing too, it's it's not just the portal, but you have the COVID year that's given people an extra uh -huh. year as well. Exactly. 115 left before halftime. Starling, tough shot, rebound belongs to Nelson. McBride gets into the paint once again, dives to the hole, missed it, and a blocking foul on Leshevsky. That is the fifth team foul on Notre Dame. Here's the look, the, the attack right there. Just a little bit of the hip. Transferring in from Eastern Michigan, Bryce McBride, 50 years senior, out of Jackson, Tennessee. His fourth point, Trey Wirtz back for Notre Dame. Couple of years at Eastern Michigan. Career average of 12.5 in Ypsilanti. 
That's five for McBride. And a 41-36 game. So you yep. talked about that danger zone. Youngstown yep. cuts it back. Yeah, nice, uh, good answer. Good finish for them going into halftime. Leshevsky had a look, didn't take it. Wurtz now with 14 on the shot clock. And a bump by Lovelace. His second foul. One and one opportunity for the Irish. In comes Lubin. That goes Leshevsky. 30.2 left in our first half. Yeah, get him out for that last defensive possession, not want to pick up that uh, the second foul, let him go in with a, only that one foul for the last 20 minutes. Second shot is good. Wurtz has nine. And the Penguins are going to take a timeout. 43-36 in favor of Notre Dame. And now a message from Works Nitro. Meet Works Nitro. Powerful tools for any project. With gas-like power without the gas. Fueled by PowerShare batteries to give you the power to outperform. 30.2 remaining, 43-36 inside that Penguin huddle. Head coach Jared Calhoun, we talked about him being in his sixth season at the helm. An interesting backstory, playing for Roly Massimino at Cleveland State, and then his longtime association with Bob Hagan. Yeah, good uh, good tutelage there, and uh, we, we shared some stories about uh, Coach Massimino, and I played in the, with the Sixers. I lived out in Villanova, so I got to know him. He transferred to Cincinnati, was a student assistant with Huggins, and then moved with Bob to West Virginia. And so great to see Bob Huggins finally get that Hall of Fame call in Springfield. 43-36. Shot clock is off. Youngstown gets into its sets. And a push by Wurtz. They had a foul to give. So we're down to 8.4 and a side out of bounds for the Penguins. Now Leshevsky is going to come back in. And McBride to trigger it for the Penguins. Cohill gives it up. McBride. Little long on the three, and the first half ends with Notre Dame on top, 43 to 36, and a well played first half. And uh, and actually, you, you, you're Notre Dame. You're happy. You know, it looked like uh, Youngstown would say was really in a groove offensively, but 36 points for them at the half. That's pretty good defensive effort in the last 10 minutes. We've reached the break in South Bend. Scoring for the Irish. Let's see for Youngstown State if Malik Green and Dwayne Cohill can get going in the scoring column to balance that out. They Griffin needs some help out there. Or Nelson, I'm sorry. Ryan on the drive. Scoops, misses, and the rebound. Dude, Nelson. Ryan, uh, he's been quiet. He's the one guy for the Irish that has been only one of four now in the game. Cohill. Unbelievable shot. Wow. That's a way to introduce yourself to the scoring in the second half. And the Russian judge gave that a 9.95 <laughs> degree of difficulty. 43-38. Ryan hooks it back, in fact, beyond the reach of Leshevsky. So a turnover. Not the best ratio for Notre Dame in that first half. They had seven assists and four turnovers. And that was that's something rare with this group, a miscommunication between those two. Well, everybody's usually that this group is on the same page for the Green. There's 
a three ball. Well, the oh. two guys that I mentioned <laughs> stepping up have uh, made themselves present here early in the second half. 43-41, Notre Dame. Words dances through the paint. Goodwin gets in close. And one. Well, Lee Green did not like that call at all. He thought he played pretty solid defense. But you see, they, they really gave him a clear out to work in that lane area. Just that one little reach and the right hand on the hip. A lot of these guys are shattering the career games played record with all the extra time they're getting. You think of a guy like Kihei Clark up in Virginia. Goodwin playing at his 127th game today. Rex Pfluger is the all-time record holder at 141. And you, you know, a few years ago, Bob, you wondered if those career marks would ever get broken right. with the one and dones. And now guys are staying through three different cycles. They're staying for seven years. John Belushi stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Green on the rebound. Cohill, whoa, off the shin. And Notre Dame gets it. Ryan leaves it. Leshevsky had it stripped. That's tipped. And leaking out ahead of the pack is Nelson. Corrals it and dunks it. He's got 18. It's just there was an ill-advised pass to Leshevsky that started that breakdown the other end. Notre Dame's lead has been reduced to three. Leshevsky. Starling looking to create and lost the handle. This was more of a function of why, thank goodness there was a turnover because I never really got over half court. <laughs> so <laughs> Nelson going to pick up a cheapie right there. But so far in these possessions early on for Notre Dame, a lot of one-on-one -on -one dribbling. Yes, they seem disjointed. Yeah, not a lot of ball movement, not a lot of player movement. And Youngstown State looking to take advantage. A turnaround by Green. Nothing. Yeah, he's got a lot of touches here early in the second half. They're trying to get him involved. 46-43. Three minutes plus into the second half. Starling to the wing and good one. He'll take the three. And make the three. Dane Goodwin with 14, his first three-pointer of the game. Well, you know, and that's the thing that uh, Jared Calhoun was worried about, that Goodwin coming off a poor shooting night against Rafferty, you knew that wasn't going to happen again, and he looks very comfortable out on the floor. Catch and shoot. Three from the corner, missed by Covington. Leaking out, Goodwin. Nice look ahead that time, advancing the basketball. Goodwin on the run out after that long jump shot. 51-43. Little bit of breathing room for the Irish. Cohill up top to Green. To this point in the game, Youngstown State has answered all these little runs by Notre Dame. Nelson, short. Leshevsky, Notre Dame, outnumbered. But Goodwin had a look at the elbow. Tried to fire that pass and... That alleyway collapsed on him. Too many hands. A bounce pass would have been better. Raton Mays with a tough one. And all of a sudden, the complexion of this game has changed up and down in this five minutes instead of being played in the half court. And way underneath the defense, a massive breakdown for Youngstown. You know what? I, I, think, I don't know if there, people thought it was a whistle or a timeout. Literally, everybody stopped playing except for Lupin. Green. Relying too much on the three right now. It's not dropping for the Penguins. Starling kicks it into high gear. Follow is good by Lubin. Boy, and that, I think that's where he's going to get his offense. On the offensive glass, that last cheap one, an easy two. 
Notre Dame on a 9-2 run forces a Youngstown State timeout. The Irish open it up to 10-55-45. It's boat. With Mike Jaminski, Bob Rathman back at Notre Dame. The Irish up now by 10. G-Man, 55-45. And only getting outscored 12-9 in the second half. But uh, again, this game at kind of a tipping point right now. Good timeout by Jared Calhoun. Let's see how they execute coming out of the timeout. And that's Dane Goodwin Lane taking a nap down there in the baseline. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Giving it the Steph Curry treatment. <laughs> Nelson. Corkscrews connects. What a shot by Adrian. And go to your guy. I mean, that's, uh, you know, he's, he had the hot hand. Uh, 20 points for him already in the game. A new career high. 55-47. Lubin travels. And he, he got a little full of himself on that catch, I think, in, uh, in the scoring. And Another timeout at 14-14 of the second half. We, have we are back as Notre Dame has this eight-point lead at 55-47. Youngstown State with the basketball. Penguins, Mike, have found a way to stay in this game. Yeah, and still five, you know, 50% in the half. The three ball has dried up a little bit for them, only one of four, and have not been to the free throw line. So Notre Dame defending and keeping them off there. And wiggling free, Adrian Nelson. Boy, inside, outside, what a versatile game he is showing. A transfer from Northern Kentucky, Pickerington, Ohio product. Having a massive day at Notre Dame. Starling. Around it comes to Wurtz. Trey uses the screen perfectly. And that's the thing. I mean, you get you, you calm one person down for Notre Dame. Somebody else can step up. Goodwin has been carrying the load here in the second half. Leshevsky really hasn't been a factor so far. And then Wurtz all of a sudden, can, you know, if he gets restarted. A lot of weapons out there for the Irish. And then there's the freshman. From the corner. Elusive rebound, but it belongs to Notre Dame. Brandon Rush missing that three out of the corner. 57-49. 13-minute mark. Poked away by Nelson. Single digits on the clock. Works for three. No. And that's a, you know, Nelson's coming in on a double-double right now. But, uh, and that's a good defensive matchup with him on Leshevsky because he can, he's got the size to match him inside and out. Another corner three by McBride. Youngstown State, four of 15 outside the arc. 57-49. Corner for Starling. And I think at least right now, that's one you live with with him. Uh, make him shoot the jump shot. And uh, get the sense maybe Notre Dame a little more deliberate in the half court now, running the clock down, trying to shorten this game somewhat. Six on the shot clock. They are looking, and that's a five-second violation. And what happened, and, and Goodwin came out of his shoe he was going to be the outlet with the clock running down. When he slipped, there was nowhere else to go. You know, when that, when that, you got to have people coming to the ball. You have to, you have to abandon the play at that point and just get the ball inbound. Unfortunate wardrobe malfunction. <laughs> Log turn four, NASCAR country. 57-49.
Rush off the high screen. A little pick and roll action, and this time, Rush takes it right to the hole for his first field goal. And he's a left-hander, too, so finishing with his offhand on that play. Again, the, the drive available to these guys. Back to a six-point spread. And a three, a big one by Lubin. But missed his only one in the first game, and uh, I don't know if that was in the scouting report for him. 60-51. He's given them some big points in the second half. Nelson answers with a three of his own. Have a day, young man. 25 points. I make it 27 points and 10 rebounds. And once again, it looked like it was getting to be 10, 12 points, and the Penguins reeled him back in. The lane opens up, but Goodwin had it bounce out. The ball's out of bounds to Youngstown. Goodwin tried to tap it out and save it, but there was no one there. We have a timeout with 10.58 to play. Ben Allen Lubin hits one from Orlando, 60-54 the scene inside Castle Coliseum as the Virginia Tech Hokies get set to take on William and Mary and that one coming along for many of you at 6 p.m. Eastern time right here. Mike Young doing a fabulous job there ACC tournament champions last year um, also very active in the portal another old team in the conference I've seen them in some preseason top 20 polls top 25 polls I did a football game once, William and Mary at Harvard. And in this, in this mausoleum of a football stadium at Harvard, these guys hold up a sheet that says, William, go home. Mary, you can stay. <laughs> <laughs> we might see something like that at Virginia Tech today, so you have to tune in at 6. McBride on the drive. Rush denied. Notre Dame with numbers. Lashevsky. Oh, Offensive foul. Kind of a delayed call, but it's going to be against Notre Dame. Here's the look. And again, it looked like a drive, but uh, i tell you what. Then Allen Lubin has been terrific in this second half. Yeah, he just, Leshevsky almost got passed into that turnover. He tried to avoid the block, but his forward momentum carried him right into the defender. And one. They're just, they're just clearing out lanes and letting guys put their head down. And if you're Notre Dame, guys are getting to their strong hand, to that right hand. you got to sit there and make them beat you with a weakness. Here's the look. You see the, the middle of the lane is wide open, and guys are just attacking. Cohill was six looking for seven, and a chance to cut it to three. He's done a good job at the line. Six for eight coming in. Three-point play here. Notre Dame with words. They front the post, nothing there. And a foul coming as Ryan launched the three. Yeah, not a great play at all by McBride. Didn't want to bail the guy. That was going to be a tough shot for Cormac Ryan. Plus, you know, plus a guy, too, who's he's struggling a little bit, Bob, and you don't want to give him any kind of rhythm. He goes to the free throw line, maybe knocks down three, finds something in his shot, a little bit more confidence, and you wake him up. And the first point of the second half for Ryan, fourth of the game. Coming up, our fast break feature. Presented by your local Ford dealers. Second shot. Ryan is the guy who hit the go-ahead layup with 9.5 to lift the Irish to victory over Radford. Had 10 points and six rebounds in that game. Cash is in at the line, 63-57. He's the most vocal guy of this group. Uh, you know, the leader really came on strong in the second half of last year. And we've got a foul coming on Ryan. 
Cormac's first. Right now, teams are pretty far away from the bonus. Youngstown State, only two team fouls. Notre Dame, that was their third. Halfway through the second half. Rush steps back, lets it fly. Leszewski rebounds. Words, this one's a turnover. McBride trips and falls, and a travel. And even off that turnover, really nice transition defense by Notre Dame. Got bodies back. There was nowhere for McBride to go, and he winds up tripping and traveling. The crossover without the over. <laughs> Good one to the bench. Starling over the timeline. Six-man rotation in this second half for Notre Dame. J.J. rolled it off the rim. Rebound done. Cohill again gets inside and scores. And in that instance, you know, I talked about forcing guys to their to their weak hand, but when you're running downhill and, uh, you know, he had momentum, it's tough to defend that and get in the position. Starling off the screen. leszewski has been very quiet in the half. Hasn't scored. No. Second half. And they take it away. On the run out, Cohill. Oh, they're in the second block. What a defensive play. Another shoe mishap for Notre Dame. But that would have cut it to two. This is a save. This is out of nowhere, too. Great hustle coming back. Great block by Lubin. Boy, that was, that's nine points. He's perfect four of four from the floor. Two blocks, three rebounds for the freshman. Lubin the rebound. And this is where, you know, as a freshman, that uh, you, you gain the coach's confidence with play like this. Leszewski, head down, driving, blocked, done with the beauty. Pushing. Raton Mays to the corner, rush. That's a three, and it's a one-point game. First three of the game for Brandon Rush. 63-62. Penguins on an 11-3 run. Leszewski. Ryan. Counts it. And a foul. A free throw when we come back. 65-62, Notre Dame. We welcome you to the Fast Break, presented by your local Ford dealer. The new basketball season is upon us. And the North Carolina Tar Heels pick number one, Mike, in the ACC. But you know what, Bob? The core back, but everything's different this year. And Brady Manick not there. And uh, Pete Nance is going to have to incorporate himself into that. But pretty nice place to start off coming off a national championship run. Not bad at all. And Armando Baycott is primed to dominate. Yeah, uh, he's a double-double machine last year. Maybe a little less offense this year with uh, more people scoring around him. But he is a load inside of the paint. Baycott off to a great start already. The preseason rookie of the year is this guy, Derek Lively from Duke. 7-1 out of Philadelphia, very active, great athlete, and uh, Duke still rolling out a great freshman class year after year. And as you look at the preseason poll, Mike, 
We both have had a chance to see Virginia in the early going. I came away impressed Friday night. How about you? Yeah, Ben Vanderplas is a guy they're going to work into the lineup uh, through the portal. Uh, gives them a nice big outside threat. Don't sleep on Miami either, but that, uh, that top four are very, very strong. And that's going to do it. Early in the second half, Notre Dame in a 10-point lead, Mike, but Youngstown State has hung in there. Yeah, the uh, word resilient comes to mind for me. There are times this game could have gotten out of shape, but uh, Penguins answering at every turn. And in the second half, it's been different guys, too. I mean, they really, you know, have relied a lot on Nelson in that first half, but they've had some good balance around him. Green, Cohill, Rush, all picking up the pace somewhat, but Nelson still 25 in the game. Youngstown, three of ten on threes in the second half. Bryant finishes off the old-fashioned three-point play to make it 66 to 62. 740 left. And to the bucket one more time, Brandon Rush. It's just beating him off the dribble. Yeah, great spin back to his offhand. Talk about the, the lack of, you know, lube in the side, the, the shot blocking in, in there. The rim is open. Good one. He lays it in. 18 for Dane. Back to a four-point game. Sail, <laughs> there's a sail in aisle five on both ends of the floor. <laughs> Rush again, this time denied. Lashewski threw up the roadblock. Ryan off the screen. See, anytime Lashewski sets the screen out there, you have to honor him. So that's what makes that play tough. It gives their shooters a, a, a different look. You can't get any help off of that. That being said, I think that Dunn has done a nice job on Lashewski defensively. Three ball miss by Green. 6-10 left in a six-point game. Turned right into a double team, but escaped. Five on the shot clock. Good one. And the rebound. Not a lot of in that possession, Bob. Cohill, 4-3, and Youngstown State refuses to go away. And they come down. They scored in four seconds on that. You see, you force the long three on one end, and uh, you pick up points. Six-point swing right there. 70-67. Good one, elbow jumper. That's no good, and a foul on Youngstown. And Lashewski makes that happen because he fights for the offensive glass and force Dunn in the foul. First on Will. Here's a look, you see that run up the floor, and that's just, just reading the play. Cohill seeing, hey, I got a good look at it. There's some pretty good coverage on the board inside. And you see Ryan right there trying to point out, saying, hey, somebody get that guy. Well, Mike, Adrian Nelson has had his rest, and he is back in now for Youngstown. It is go time. Game on in South Bend, 70, 67. Five minutes and 10 seconds remain. And you gotta, you've got a nice rest there, and then you also have a timeout coming in under four, so good clock management for his court time. Ryan, oh, tried to reverse it, got it back, through his legs, and it's out of bounds. Youngstown ball. Looked like a Larry Bird type pass right there. McHale coming down the lane, but the, tell you what, quick hands by Youngstown State bails him out. Here's the look right here. I mean, this looked like an easy bucket. That's pretty creative through the wickets. But good call. Cohill and a foul. 
Youngstown State, the recipient of only six foul shots in this game. And they will get two very big ones right here for Dwayne Cohill. For the day, Cohill has six assists, 12 points, five of 10 shooting, and he's one of two at the line. He's coming back from an ACL as well in 2021. The former Dayton Flyer putting it in for his 13th point. This to cut it to one with 439. And the last thing you want to do in your own building is give the other team hope. And uh, you know, South State's created their own hope. Great take. Beautiful lay in by Words. And we got a timeout for Notre Dame. Trey Words now with 13. And a three point advantage for the home standing Irish. Back to South Bend after this. This is your secret to a deliciously easy thing. Discover the best presented by the Fresh Market. Huge games each way. Uh, Adrian Nelson's been fantastic. A double double for him. Uh, 25, very efficient shooting, and uh, for a good win, 10 of those points in the second half. He has a great bounce back game from Radford, where he was one of eight from the floor. Also, doing it on the glass, seven rebounds for him. But Bobby, that timeout again, short bench, clock management. You've got another timeout coming under four here. So Mike Ray trying to get some rest for his troops in the last uh, three, four minutes of the game. Both teams sitting there with two timeouts remaining. Off the crossover, Cohill no. Fights for his own miss, and it's won by his teammate. Stepping into the three is done. No, too long. And then Lasheski's hit the face. Loveless that time. It's a little. Uh, a little too over anxious to get the turnover. Still only uh, five team fouls for Youngstown State. Here's the look. You know, in that situation, I mean, he'll learn that, but you, you're not going to get that ball. Get back in transition, get back and set defensively instead of giving up a cheap foul. Five team fouls on Youngstown. Four on their day. Four minutes left. Good one into the paint, left hand, lay it good. His career high is 27, he's got 20 today. 74, 269. Possessions get bigger now for the Penguins. And it is gonna be a turnover. Cohill just dribbled himself into a turnover that time. Staggered screen for Wurtz. Covered pretty well by Youngstown. Starling, twisted, turning and scoring. Wow. Really, really impressive off the dribble. This one rolls off for Covington, but he will shoot two free throws. With that being said, Bob, that's just a little bit too fast going back after a made basket. I mean, for Youngstown, credit them. They got the ball in quickly. Back up the floor really put a lot of pressure on Notre Dame after a made layup. Miles Hunter is going to check in in a moment for Youngstown. Garrett Covington, first time at the line today, two for two for the season. 2.58 remaining. Out of the game goes Will Dunn. Who really has done a nice job defensively on Lachewski. That's been a good matchup for them. Five points for Covington. Penguins down five. Youngstown picking up the pressure, taking a little time off the clock. Yeah. 
Good one. Waits for the screen. Youngstown on the switch. And a loose ball taken away by Youngstown State. And a drive and a lay-in is good by Lovelace. Wow, what an athletic play. Makes the gets the turnover out front. Let's see why Jared Calhoun is high on that freshman. Words at mid-floor being harassed by Cohill. Good one. Worse, little show and go, corner three, good by Starling. Timeout, Youngstown State. Welcome to Notre Dame. Yeah, talk about a confidence boost for this guy. I mean, the book on him, I'm sure, let him settle for the jump shot, but he's had a couple of threes in this game now. Youngstown State was scrapping, and they picked the pocket of Goodwin. And look at the athleticism. Yeah, just this finish. I thought that late bother was going to throw him off some, but that was terrific. Con con look at this. Wide open, good driving pitch. Five Notre Dame players in double figures, and Lubin sitting there with nine. So really balanced offense. That pushes the Notre Dame lead to six with a minute 54 to play. And they're like, they're probably, how, we, how do we kill these guys? Youngstown <laughs> <laughs> keeps on coming back. 154 left. Youngstown down to its final timeout. Notre Dame has two left and each team with five fouls. <laughs> Cohill gets loose and scores again. That's a well-conceived sideline out-of-bounds play out of that timeout. They've really done a nice job coming out of those. Notre Dame trying to get it over in time and beat the 10-second count. 79-75. No need to foul here. Just solid D. A minute 23, Starling. Still daring him to shoot, going under on that screen. And he drills another one. They went under on that screen, daring him to shoot. They didn't want the drive, and he has answered with two big threes. The first McDonald's All-America to come to Notre Dame since Demetrius Jackson in 2013. They've been waiting for his arrival, and he has punctuated that arrival today. Here's the look. You see, they're going to set those late screens. Leshevsky uh, altering it a little bit. He's got a big guy on him. Grit Nelson not wanting to come out and pressure the shot. Big time jump shot right there, Bob. With one on the shot clock yep. when it went through. Starling is a darling <laughs> in South Bend. 82-75. 117 left. And you're right about Youngstown State. They are harder to kill than Rasputin. <laughs> Again, I, I, I just have, have loved their execution coming out of the timeout. They got the drive the last time. I, I, I still think, you know, if you can get a, a quick hitter, get it down to five. You don't need a three right now. And the thing for uh, Notre Dame, they've got to be ready now for full court pressure. You know, I'm sure after a made basket that Young that uh, Young Sound State's going to come after them. Back to back threes with the game on the line for J.J. Starling. Youngstown State has to go 94 feet on the inbounds here after the Irish timeout. 117 to play. 82-75. Clock starts on the touch. So Youngstown State, Notre Dame not pressuring, so buy some time. Inside Nelson. Now on the cut, a jam. 
Well executed. Rush has nine all in the second half. 82-75. And Notre Dame beats the pressure. Now Goodwin waits. All five guys for Notre Dame, pretty good ball handlers. This is a tough team to pressure. I'm going to play this one straight up. Not getting into the foul game yet. Words, nobody home. Well, I just, everybody for Notre Dame above the free throw line. Eighty-four seventy-seven. Rush going up, left hand no. Lashewski has it. Shot clock's off. Now they got a foul. Now they get the foul to stop the clock on Adrian Nelson. It's still only sixteen fouls, so one more before they can put them on the line. Here you see it. Everybody have the just. The high screen roll there, and there's just no help. Uh, everybody above the free throw line. Notre Dame. Thing here, just be aggressive coming to the basketball to receive. And the foul on Nelson will go to the other end for a one and one for Lashewski. Opening night, Nate had 28 and 12 for Radford. He's got another double double today, 12 and 10. Well, I don't know if he's scored in the second half. He has not. But he can help salt it away right here. 19.5 left. So a Baker's dozen for Nate. Notre Dame's up eight. And boy, credit the Penguins. No quit in the men of Jared Calhoun. Second shot. Eighty-six seventy-seven. Cohill. Downhill and scores. Timeout. Last, was 13.4. Yeah, last time out. Oh. 86-79 is our score. Notre Dame trying to send these guys back to Ohio with what will be for the Irish a pretty hard-earned win here today. And, uh, you know, I, I think coming into this game, they felt like the, they had it put up over 80 <laughs> against the team. And, you know, for Youngstown, they, they've got a chance to, to break that mark coming into an You know, they came in average of 90 points. So this is a pretty good offensive showing for them. Just other guys in, uh, for, you know, for Mike Bray, other guys than Lashewski stepped up and took up the scoring load in the second half. You know, can't underestimate those nine points from Lubin. That's, a, you know, Goodwin bounces back with a 20-point effort for him. You know, Ryan, after a slow first half, 11. Wurtz with 15. Starling, 17. Six of those huge, those back-to-back -back threes down the stretch. I'll tell you what, it's, oh, I said it earlier. If, if he starts knocking down threes, <laughs> oh, yeah. how do you guard that guy? Overall, Notre Dame has shot 60% from the field and 53% from three. And 12 of 13 from the line, and they're fighting for their lives <laughs> here in this game. Thirteen point seven. Full court pressure by the Penguins. Man, the reach sends Cormac Ryan to the line. We're down to twelve point seven. William and Mary at Virginia Tech. 
Many of you will get that game at the top of the hour, 6 Eastern time. So Ryan, is that a, as you mentioned, Mike, a strong second half. Looks at a one and one. And it's still, it was still basically a, a six person rotation. You know, Zona getting in when Kuszewski was dinged up a little bit in the first half, but that was only for a few minutes. It's a book. 88-79. Youngstown State does not have a timeout. Nelson gets two more to add to his impressive afternoon of 29 points. Three seconds, two, one, that's it. Notre Dame gets the win to go to 2-0. Oh. Heck of a game. Yeah, no, I mean, for Youngstown State, uh, a very, very nice showing. You know, thought, all right, step up in competition. Maybe they're not going to be able to score as much. Come in here, give them 81 points. But uh, Notre Dame, good balanced offense across the board. Didn't have to lean on Lashevsky nearly as much as they did in, in the game against Radford. And we have to salute Adrian.